hello in this tutorial i'll show you the right gaussian blur radius that you can apply to images in order to retain with the best a natural skin texture every single time you're trying to use frequency separation as a retouching technique so this is for those people that always get unrealistic skin texture and plastic images and those that don't know the right amount of gaussian blur radius to apply to the image every single time they're trying to do frequency separation so this is going to be a tutorial focusing on only that and if i truly find it helpful make it a point that you hit the like button on this video so that youtube can push and recommend this video to so many people having the same issue out there so i would recommend that you hit the like button on this video because you're going to be benefiting so much from this very video so right now this is the image that we have and i'll show you everything in detail or in depth because if i really don't understand the concept of frequency separation you're not going to be able to understand this at the end of it all so i want you to understand frequency separation from the very start and how we apply that right of right amount of gaussian blood to the image so right now this is the image that we have and usually with frequency separation whether you're using a mixer brush tool or even a lasso tool as a technique to fine tune or even out the skin tones in your images if at all you mess up the gaussian radius it means your image won't have the best skin details out of it or at the end of the skin retouching process so let's go and understand this right now so i'm just going to come and create those two layers like i said we are going to understand frequency separation from the very bottom so i'm just going to come to the background and press ctrl j once and ctrl j or command j the second time if at all you're using mac so usually this is our low layer and this one is our high high layer so usually we have our colors in the low frequency layer and in the high frequency layer we have the textures so how frequency separation works the magic usually takes place in this first step or in this low frequency layer and i want you to pay maximum attention to this step so usually we turn this off and we select the low frequency layer so if at all you're using an action or a shortcut that enables you to create these layers automatically this is a point when the action stops and you apply in the gaussian blur values or the radius that you want to apply on the skin but when you mess up this it means you won't get the best out of your image or the best out of your retouched image at the end of the process so i'm just going to select this and the action usually stops at this point when you put in the details but if at all you don't have the action this is what you have to do so you're going to select the low frequency layer then come to filter and come down to blur and come to gaussian blur so with the gaussian blur selected you're going to get this window open for you so right now you can either zoom in or you can either zoom out or zoom in rather so this helps you to navigate through the skin so it is the, literally the same image that you have in this window in order to see it well make sure that you leave the preview checked right here so this is the most important step and i just hope you are really paying attention so you have to zoom in and look at the image at a close range and after doing this as soon as you click on the radius start moving it up so you have to move the radius up up the point when you're just starting to lose out on the textures or the details in the image so just start moving this up as you're looking at the textures right here so you have to look for a reference point or an area that has prominent skin textures in the image meaning when you start losing out on these textures the rest of the textures will automatically be lost but remember we are going to regain them back in the high frequency layer so you shouldn't mind so I'm just going to start taking this up just like that and I just want you to look at the image as you're trying to or as you are moving this so you have to stop at the point when the textures are just starting to disappear so at round 8 that is when the textures are just starting to get lost and you can see that uh, even in the image they are just starting to disappear so just stop at the point when the textures are just starting to get lost or disappear from the image and when you're done that doing that just simply press ok so your action when you put in the values is just going to automatically apply everything for you but if at all you don't have it we are going to come right here to high frequency and now activate it 
and by the way if at all you're interested in purchasing my actions you can check the links in the description of this video so that you can purchase my skin retouching essentials pack so with the high frequency i selected we're just going to come right here too so make sure that this is selected and now we're just going to come to image so you select the high frequency line and come to image and come down to apply image so when you come to apply image usually the source is the name of the image and the layer from which we want to extract our textures remember we want to extract the textures to disappear completely from the low frequencies so just come and select low frequency layer and the channel has to be rgb and if at all you're dealing with an 8-bit image if at all you have 8 right here make sure you use a blend mode of subtract and the opacity has to be 100 the scale has to be 20 offset 128 and make sure the previous on and you'll have the gray or the textures on this gray kind of layer right here but if at all you have 16 meaning your image is going to be 16 bit make sure you change the blend mode to add the opacity has to be 100 make sure preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale has to be an offset at zero and make sure you turn on the invert option and you have the same results right here come and simply press ok and come and change the blend mode from normal and change it all the way down to linear light and we'll get back the image the way it was meant to be so usually i group this so i'm just going to select both by pressing ctrl and clicking on both layers and selecting them and pressing ctrl g or command g on the keyboard to group them and you can rename this to frequency separation so this is another step that you have to take into consideration so usually open up the frequency separation layer and usually when you want to fine tune the skin tones or to even out the skin tones which is the most important step in skin retouching when you're using frequency separation we select the low frequency and simply get whichever tool that we use to do our frequency separation and for this case I'm going to use the mixer brush tool because it is more effective and a faster way to retouch so i'm just going to come right here to a setting and measure the hardness is at zero and measure clean brush is selected measure the second option is selected which says clean the brush after each and every stroke the weight we are going to be using is nine percent the load is 75 the mix of 90 and the flow of 100 percent make sure sample all layers is not checked because when you click on this option that says sample all layers and you start painting on the skin let me just show you this and you start painting it means it's also going to be copying the textures and painting them in the low frequency layer which we don't want to happen in this case so i'm just going to undo that so make sure sample all layers is not checked and you have selected the low frequency layer so usually in order to retouch better i turn off the high frequency layer and i'm just going to start painting colors that look alike so with the mr brush tool selected I'm going to move the mixer brush tool in the direction of an area that I'm trying to work on in this case. So I'm just going to start painting colors that look alike. So you can see I'm basically mixing colors that are looking similar or alike in the image. And you can see the image is turning out to look a little bit plastic. But the more plastic it is getting, the better your results. You know why? It is because we have turned off our textures or high frequency layer so i'm just going to come and start painting through or even out uh evening out rather the skin tones and that is going to make the skin look a little bit plastic but that is not uh the emphasis so let's just paint in because right now we are only dealing with the colors because we have turned off the textures in this case so i'm just going to come and mix those like that and when you're done blending uh, the colors within the skin, you can come back and turn on the textures or high frequency layer and turn on and off the overall group to see what you have done. You can see the before and after. The textures are still there, but at the same time, we have evened out the skin tone transitions. And when you're done working on the skin, you can come and remove the blemishes. So I prefer to remove blemishes after doing the skin retouching. So I select the texture layer because blemishes are part of the texture layer and i select the clone sample tool or you can use s on the keyboard as a shortcut the hardness i'm using is zero percent the blend mode is normal or percent the flat hundred percent make sure align is checked and 
the sample is currently because we only want to deal with the high frequency layer so right now you can zoom in and reduce on the size of the clone sample by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard so the left the open is going to reduce on the size of the clone sample and the close bracket is going to increase on the size so make sure you hold and alternate key on the keyboard alternate and left click close to the blemish or you left click close or on a clean area that is next to the blemish that you want to eliminate and simply release, release the option or alternate key on the keyboard and simply left click to clear or remove that blemish so that is how to uh, set up your or know the right frequency separation radius for your images and this is all for this tutorial and if at all you have learned something you make sure that you hit the like button on this video so that youtube can push and recommend this video to so many people out there ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing trials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating